Right now we have three really good examples of facial recognition being banned within a specific city. San Francisco is one of them, another one is Oakland, and the third is Somerville in Massachusetts. There's also a bill being discussed right now for the state of Michigan, which is the first statewide challenge to facial recognition. Within the last couple of years, we learned that major cities within Michigan, including Detroit, have had facial recognition deployed for years. And this is an important moment for the U.S. because it's the first time we're starting to see challenges about uh, surveillance and biometrics data being captured, stored, and used for the purposes of law enforcement being transferred into the courts. Today we're in our Mixed Reality studio to get the big picture on facial recognition. Okay Liz, so when an artificially intelligent facial recognition program sees a human face like this, tell us what it's looking for first. Well, there are lots of methodologies that we can look at, one in particular called open face. The first thing it needs to do is find out whether there's even a face in the photo. And it does that by looking for 68 different facial landmarks that typically represent uh, what we would think of as a visibly human face. Within those 68 different groupings, we're looking for edges or gradients. And the edges typically represent a group of pixels that's the same color or that shifts from a darker color to a lighter one. In the open face paper, there's uh, particularly eight different landmarks that represent a human eye, and many others comprise an eyebrow or a mouth or a nose, anything along those lines that you might see when you look in the mirror. Well, now that we know we have a human face, the goal is to get it into a format that's uniform. And using these 68 points as anchors, we can then scale or rotate or even adjust the angle of the individual's face. So this is going to allow the program to be able to make it bigger or rotate it a couple degrees and still be able to effectively understand what it's looking at. Exactly. We want every face that we're trying to predict on to be effectively similar enough that we know things are in the same spot. The challenges come in whenever your training data is different from what you're trying to predict. So that could mean if all your training data is done in low light and you have a really sunny day, then it's going to be really difficult to predict a match. If it's a, something as simple as you have on a pair of sunglasses, that removes a lot of the landmarks and makes it a lot harder to predict. Well, the next step is to try to extract information from that face. And we do that by passing the photo through a neural net. Each layer, until the last one, is going to try to extract features and then represent them in a mathematical form. So Liz, where are these programs getting the data to match these faces to? Well, usually a facial recognition system has a database of photos that have already been run through a neural net, meaning they're already translated into math, into multidimensional coordinates. Now, if I have a database and I know that this mathematical representation looks like Liz O'Sullivan, then I can also take this new photo and try to figure out how close that vector space is to the resulting vector space of my new photo. If it's very close, then yes, it might be Liz. If they're very far apart, it's likely it's somebody else. People are starting to realize exactly how powerful this tool is, and in some cases we're finding out that law enforcement and federal agencies have been using it for some time without our knowledge or consent. In a lot of cases, we're finding out that this technology doesn't work as well on people of color or women or um, you know, gender fluid or non-binary people. So this is important now for us to take a moment to understand fully exactly what we want our civil liberties to look like in the U.S. Hey, NBC News viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.